Alright, so we're going to get a basic idea on how brain plasticity works and more specifically how long-term potentiation, long-term depression work for you to learn. And then we're going to look at how some of the mechanisms come into play so you can get like a little more intricate view on how things work. Alright, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. So here we're going to get a basic idea on how neuroplasticity works with long-term potentiation and long-term depression. And the most studies part about how LTP and how LDP work is here in the hippocampus. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So what we're going to be focusing on is the CA3 neuron that synapses to the CA1 neuron. And that synapse is going to talk a lot about LTP and LTD. In LTP we have more synapses, stronger connections, and we'll talk about the early and late phase. So we have the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. Here we have the vesicles and Inside these vesicles, we have a neurotransmitter called glutamate. Now, when an action potential comes down from the presynaptic neuron, it will bring these vesicles to the synapse and release glutamate. Now, here in the postsynaptic neuron, the CA1 neuron, we have two types of receptors. We have the AMPA receptor and the NMDA receptor. The AMPA receptor will let in sodium to allow for a postsynaptic depolarization. The NMDA receptor is permeable to calcium. Um, so now we have glutamates that attaches to these receptors that will allow them to open up. Now the NMDA receptor is blocked with a magnesium ion and it's because of it, that blockage that calcium cannot enter in. Now the reason why it's so important for calcium to enter in is because that's what's going to start a cascade for changes in the postsynaptic neurons so that we can get long-term potentiation. The calcium will act as a second messenger. Now how is calcium supposed to enter in if magnesium is blocking the way? Well, NMDA receptors are also called coincidence receptors. Now coincidence is a unique concept and what it's saying is that two things need to happen for the magnesium to exit out of the NMDA receptor. First, we need to have glutamate presence. We have glutamate and it's attaching onto the NMDA receptor. Next, we need to have a postsynaptic depolarization. And we get that from the AMPA receptor and the sodium ions. So once we get enough currents to come in and glutamate is presence, then magnesium will leave and calcium will enter in. And that will start the cascade for uh, long-term potentiation. Now that calcium is entering into the neuron, we can get a lot of things happening. Calcium will start second messenger cascades to bring more AMP receptors up into the neuron synapse. Calcium can also act as a retrograde signal that will go back to the presynaptic neuron and create even more vesicles and more neurotransmitters. It can even also change the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron to allow for even more current to enter through. Now we're going to talk about these in just a moment. So now we have this phase that we're entering. It's called the induction of LTP. And this is where the second messenger cascades come in to play with calcium coming in. So now we have calcium and calmodulin. And that is going to go to CAM kinase 2, or it can go to PKC. Now, PKC is going to bring more AMPA receptors that are down in reserve and bring them up to the neuronal synapse. And calcium calmodulin is going to phosphorylate those AMPA receptors so that they can get have a wider opening and allow for more ions to come in, allowing for more depolarization in the neuron. Now not only do we have current coming in from just a few amp receptors, but we have more current coming in from more amp receptors. And that leads to easier depolarization 
of the postsynaptic neuron. Now that is the early phase of LTP, long-term potentiation. Now when we get into the late phase, we're going to be talking more about uh, more of what's going to happen throughout the whole neuron and we're going to be getting to more of the creation of new proteins to create more receptors throughout the rest of the neuron. So here in the late phase we have calcium going into another pathway and it will go to adenylylcyclase. Adenylylcyclase will make uh, cyclic AMP or CAMP and CAMP will go to PKA which will go to MAP kinase which will go into the Krebs cycle in the nucleus of the neuron and that will lead to the creation of more proteins for the rest of the neuron to use. And these proteins will go and travel up into the rest of the neuron. Now here we're looking at spines and so we're getting more proteins into different spines of the neuron. Alright, so now we're going to be looking at long-term depression. And long-term depression is how we weaken the synapse. More specifically, the synapses that we're talking about is at the CA3 to CA1 synapse. So in here, inside the postsynaptic neuron, we have PP2, which will come and take off the phosphorus. Now remember that will um, weaken the, the opening of the AMP receptor and it will bring them in so now there will be fewer AMP receptors in the postsynaptic neuron and that is usually due when you get lower frequent activations. Alright so now we have an overall view of the different pathways that calcium can take depending on the frequency of stimulations that we get in that neuronal synapse. So calcium acts on either protein kinase or protein phosphatase and the protein phosphatase, phosphatase will act with the unphosphorylated synaptic protein and yield LTD while the protein kinase will deal with phosphorylated synaptic protein and that will yield LTP. Now LTP happens when we get a higher stimulation of frequency and LTD will happen when we get a lower stimulation frequency. Huh, I'm tired. All right, well, I hope you learned a little bit about brain plasticity, how we learn in school, and maybe even a little bit about dancing. But, hey, I'm really tired, but I gotta go. Until next time, thanks, peace, see ya.